Howdy there folks and welcome to Bullets for Bucks. My name's Steven and today we're going to compare the Seekins Precision PH2 and 300 PRC against the Hawa Carbon Elevate. This one happens to be in 6.5 Creedmoor, so just bear with me here. Let's start with the Havoc PH2. Features about a one inch thick, pretty stiff recoil pad. Has a carbon composite stock. To me it feels like polymer reinforced with carbon fibers. It has a flush cup at the bottom for your QD slang and like a ball like palm swell. It's pretty hefty. It's got checkering for added grippiness. Then coming forward, you have a metal bottom metal. The push button release is inside the trigger guard for the magazine, which I actually don't really prefer if I'm honest. In long action, it comes with a three capacity carbon fiber magazine. That's pretty cool. In short action, it comes with a five capacity P mag, I believe. Features a Timony trigger. That's a single stage trigger. Super, super crisp and clean. Just down about two and a quarter, two and a half pounds. Very nice trigger. Has a 90 degree bolt throw here. Uses a Remington 700 footprint, but the recoil lug is one part of the receiver and it features four locking lugs, a M16 style extractor and a plunger ejector, um, a removable tactical bolt handle as well and you can remove the bolt head has a side release lever for the bolt two position safety on safe it just keeps you from firing but it does not lock the bolt in place very nice stainless steel receiver it's pillar bedded and uh, fully glass bedded as well so excellent bedding they've done there and then coming forward, you have a 26 inch barrel in long action, 24 inch barrel in short action. It's 416 stainless steel spiral fluted threaded 5 8 by 24 does not come with a muzzle brake and it is fully free floated, has a front sling swivel stud and a flush cup. Pretty uh, large um, fore end grip on this um, and a little bit flattened on the bottom for bag riding and it has checkering for added grip. This rifle, comes in at a weight of about uh, 6.9 pounds in short action and 7.2 pounds in long action. Does come with a 20 MOA Picatinny scope base rail. Now let's take a look at the Hawa Carbon Elevate. Features a slim profile limb saver recoil pad. More traditional stock style here. Hand laid carbon fiber though. Sling swivel stud, a little bit larger than traditional palm swell, but nothing crazy. All metal bomb metal with a floor plate push button tab in front of the trigger guard. Sometimes this one can kind of stick. Three plus one floor plate. Has a hacked two stage trigger. It's not really user adjustable. Breaks about two and a half to three and a half pounds from the factory usually. Has a three position safety to the rear, locks the bolt in place. One forward you can remove the bolt but you can't fire it. All the way forward you can manipulate the bolt and fire it. Push button tab on the left side to remove the bolt. Has three vents on the side two locking lugs, plunger ejector, Saco style extractor, and a more traditional bolt knob. Does have toolless firing pin removal though. This bolt does not run as smooth or quiet in the receiver as the Seekins Precision. That one runs a lot smoother in the receiver in my opinion. The receiver on this though is great. It has an integral recoil lug that's super beefy. And I believe these are pillar bedded stocks as well, though this one is not glass bedded and the barrel is not free floated. It does feature, depending on the caliber, a 22 or 24 inch carbon fiber wrapped barrel from Hawa is what I've been told. Threaded 5 8 by 24 does not come with a muzzle brake. Now, this rifle comes in quite a bit lighter. I believe it comes in at like 6.2 pounds, but it depends if it's mini, long, or short action. All right, now that we've gone over these rifles, let's take them to the range and see how they perform.
right, now that we're back from the range, let's talk about the Seekins Precision first. Shoots absolutely fantastic with the small sampling, sampling of factory ammunition we shot through it. I mean, this has got to be out of the box one of the most accurate rifles I've ever shot. Ejects, extracts, ejects, extracts, and feeds flawlessly. A joyous shoot. Love the ergonomics. I would like to see this with an adjustable comb and adjustable spacers for length of pull. And maybe a stock that feels a little bit more premium, but man, that thing is a dream to shoot. Coming to the How Elevate, also shoots absolutely insanely accurate, especially for being an ultra lightweight backcountry rifle. Um, and obviously noticeably lighter than the PH2. It's really hard to find accurate weights. I believe in mini action, this weighs like five pounds something, short action like six, and then close to seven in long action, but very difficult to find weights on this rifle. Um, this thing is capable of half MOA. Both are capable of half MOA. Given the very small amount of factory ammunition we shot out of both these rifles, though, it's impossible to say one is inherently more accurate than the other. With proper load development, both these rifles, I'm confident, could shoot quarter MOA. Obviously, this one, it, it does take a little bit more, in my opinion, skill or technique to shoot as it's an ultralight rifle and ultralight rifles are inherently more difficult for me to shoot consistently accurate and to mitigate felt recoil. However, both shot tremendously. The action does ride way smoother in the Havoc. The trigger is user adjustable and feels way better in the Seekins Precision. Um, if I was going to go to the range and short hunts, I would take the Havoc PH2. If I'm going to go on a long backcountry hunt and want something ultra lightweight, more slim in design, I'm going to pick the Hawa Carbon Elevate. Thanks for watching Bullets for Bucks. Check out this next video and subscribe.